Hi, this is Andy and Sharon McClellan from Father's House. Welcome to this teaching session. We pray that you will be blessed and grow as a result of listening today. So, uh, I just want to welcome you, all the onlineers, today to Father's House and to this teaching today, which is called Take Charge of Your World. And I've just been really challenged recently about, you know, do we have authority to change our world? To um, uh, Can we change our world? You know, is it possible to change the world around us personally? Do we really believe that we're blessed people? If so, what does that look like for us? So this morning, I just want to encourage you this morning um, to share on your Facebook. If you go to Father's House Facebook page, and you can actually share on your Facebook the video um, live this morning and get the word out there of what's being taught this morning, because I really believe this will be transformational for your life and for the lives of others um, around you. So yeah, welcome, Gillian. Nice to see you. Andy McClelland, good to see you, Andrew Miles, good to see you. Let us know where you're watching from this morning. Um, be great to know the, the nations that are joining in with us this morning um, and just see uh, where we can go. Good morning, Winston Kelly from London Diary in Ireland. You're very welcome. We have a few Irish here. Um, yeah, so keep bringing it in, keep bringing it in. Winston, there's a call of God in your life. God has set you apart for such a time as this. You are not created just to um, be the norm. You are created to lead a people into the presence of God. And uh, God is blessing you in this season to grow in the knowledge of that and to be able to begin to execute that, I believe, in this coming season. Good morning, Emma Mack. Welcome from Bournemouth. And we just welcome you on this morning. Um, Victor, well done. Excellent. So who among you battles with um, the thoughts like that song, that worship song we were doing, you say, who here this morning battles with those thoughts of I'm not enough? I, I don't belong. I'm not loved. Nobody cares. Nobody hears me. Nothing's ever going to change. Those thoughts that that cram into our minds at times, usually whenever we're feeling weak or low emotionally, isn't it? Or when something hasn't worked out or when we feel betrayed or disappointed, the enemy just comes in like a flood into those, those arenas of our mind, into that realm of our thought life and just um, crushes sometimes our ability just to see a way out. And that's what I wanna to speak to you about this morning. Hopefully I can help you see today just who you are and the power, the power that is in you to change and what you need and what needs to change because of who you are, because you're a child of God, you're a son and a daughter, but you're a son and a daughter of what? A son and a daughter of who? So let's look at that. You know, everything that was created was created by Jesus created by Jesus. Everything is upheld by the power of what? His word. His word. Imagine the power in the word, just the spoken word. What kind of power has he got in the word, in his spoken word, and the written word, and the prophetic word that holds everything together? Literally, the universe, our lives, gravity, the air that we breathe is held together by the power of his word. So the very first revelation of God in scripture is right back in Genesis 1, and that's the revelation of him as creator. And there were like 10 de decrees that he released that over a period of, of six days, he let those decrees of let there be, let there be, let there be, and everything was brought into being. 
let there be. Imagine having the authority and the power to say, let there be, and it happens instantaneously. Can you imagine what that would look like in your life today? What would you change? What would you call into being? What would you call from the unseen realm to the seen realm right today? He created three realms on the first day. And during the second three-day period, he populated those realms by the spoken, creative, preceding words of life. God's eighth proclamation was to make man in our image. Let us make man in our image. And out of that, he took the least substance of the earth. He took the dust, the dust, like the least that we, we value as the least. And yet all life comes from it, doesn't it? Our crops, our everything comes and, and sustained by what comes out of the living earth. And out of that living earth, he fashioned mankind. Whenever you give your life to Christ, he lives inside of you. His spirit is living in your flesh. He's in you and you are in him. Being made in his image is the very core of who you are. You cannot be human. You cannot be made and fashioned in the very image of the creator, God, and not be creative. You have his DNA. It's in you. Let me say that again. You cannot be human, made and fashioned in the very image of your creator God and not be creative. It's your DNA. You are creative because he that created you is the author of creativity. He is the author of creativity. Everything that you need to change, everything that you need to take charge of, everything that you need to create, everything you need to rule your world today around you has already been given to you in Christ Jesus. Everything that you need to change where you are today, what you're doing, the things that the dreams that you have in your heart to create those, to bring those from this dream realm into the realm of, of reality is in you right now. Everything. Why? Because the power of creator God that spoke the universe, that spoke the, the earth, that spoke gravity, that spoke the air, spoke the animals, that spoke you into creation. Everything that he has lives inside of you right now. Isn't that amazing? Isn't it awesome? So, and everything that you do can either be a testimony to you or a testimony to the Lord. Everything that you do can either be given as a testimony to you or a testimony to the Lord. But if God is going to bless you, he says, do not give my glory to any other. Do not give my glory to any other. So let's be aware of who the testimony belongs to. He is the foundation of all that we are. He is the hope and glory of all that we are. He is the creator of all that we are. So let's make sure that we give him the proper glory and honor and exaltation that his name deserves. So who are you? Well, you are a temple, a dwelling place of the most powerful presence, the most powerful energy, the most powerful force of living spirit ever known that has ever been and ever will be. You are a temple, a dwelling place of the most powerful presence, most powerful energy and force and living spirit that has ever been and ever will be. A presence that has always been, always will be. That is what dwells inside of you. That is what you are a temple of. That is what you hold. That's what you contain. I want you just to think about that. You're not just Andrew or, or Sarah or Claire or you're not just someone who works in, in Tesco's or is a lawyer or is a, a bin man. If you know Jesus Christ, 
that same power that rose Jesus from the dead wrote, lives in you. That same creative power that rose Jesus from the dead lives in you. It lives in you when you're working in Tesco's. It lives in you when you're taking the garbage. It lives in you when you're battling with your children. It li lives in you when you want to retaliate in your marriage. It lives in you when you can't see a way out of a storm. That same power that creates life lives within you. Oh, you have authority. You know, when you think about what is, is what you contain, the authority that comes with that is, is extreme. It's extreme. It's beyond our understanding. And every battle that you win gives you another level of authority. So when you are battling something, whatever you're battling right now, as you partner with God, as you partner with this, the spirit of God within you, this resurrection power within you, this creative force within you, as you partner with that to overcome this battle, he's a victorious warrior, which means you're a victorious warrior. So whatever it is you're facing today, whatever battle you're facing, he is your victorious warrior, which means you're a victorious warrior. You will come through. And when you come through in partnership with him, you will have authority over that very thing. And you go up the next rung of the ladder. It's another authority tool in your tool belt. So what has God given you authority over in the years that you've been living, whether you've been living six years or, or 90 years? Each of us, there are battles that have been won in our lives. And those battles are things that we now have authority over. We have power over. So you have all you need to change your world right now. The enemy wants you to believe that you're inferior, that you're not enough, that you're not loved, that you're insignificant, that you're in incapable of accomplishing your dreams. but. God says different, doesn't he? In the kingdom of God, access to the flow of God's creative power requires opening the doorway to its release. So I believe today there is a doorway to releasing the flow of God's creative power within you. And I believe it's a twofold doorway. And this doorway is one, Words that are spoken with conviction and authority, empowered by God's indwelling spirit. Let me say that again. We, we go through a twofold doorway to release the creative power of God within us. One, words spoken with conviction and authority, empowered by God's indwelling spirit. So the first thing that opens the doorway of creativity is how we speak what we declare, how we declare it with our conviction, how we declare it standing in authority and empowered by the Holy Spirit. The other gateway, the other doorway to that gateway are deeds done with assurance, conviction, intention by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. And these two dimensions work hand in hand, the work of your words and the work of your hands reveal that you are a child of God. So let's look back in Genesis 1. Jesus, let there be. What was the first gateway? What was the first door to the gateway of creativity? It was the gateway of his word. It was the gateway of declaration. And the second was he created, he formed man in his own image. So he did the deeds that were necessary with the assurance and the conviction partnering with the Holy Spirit that at that time hovered over the waters, just waiting for the command. So Jesus set us the example right back in Genesis 1, the power of your word, the power of the declarative word and the deeds done that par in partnership with that under the conviction and inspiration of the Holy Spirit. So, Jesus created the world, the universe, creation of animal life, human life. He healed the sick. He raised the dead. He fed thousands. He equipped teams. He taught thousands. 
He washed feet. He had fun with sinful people. He made wine. He prophesied. He did so much. Yet, yet, he says, greater things will we do. Greater things will we do. Greater things will you do. So what are you going to do? You know, Jesus healed the sick, raised the dead, equipped people, taught thousands, fed thousands, washed feet, made wine. Maybe you're going to be the one that, that uh, goes into entrepreneurial wine creation and creates an absolutely new brand of wine that's going to make you thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars. Maybe you're going to be one that God is going to call to be one that raises the dead. Maybe you're going to be one that God calls to heal broken hearts. Maybe you're going to be one that encourages people or an entrepreneur of new businesses, new creative ideas. Ephesians 1.18 says the same power that rose Jesus from the dead lives in you. I want you to say that this morning. The same power that rose Jesus from the dead lives in me. Say it again. The same power that rose Jesus from the dead lives in me. Come on. Woo! If you became convinced, right, that you really possessed the God-given authority to create life, a life of blessing and not cursing, a life of fulfillment, right? If you really believe that you possess the God-given authority to do that, would you be willing to pay the price? Would you be willing to give up old ways of thinking? old ways of speaking, old ways of acting, and delve into learning God's ways, his creative ways, his original design for you. We're, we're born in his image, but the original design was marred. But Yeshua has restored the original design. That means that all the creativity that was lost has been restored to us. All the power has been restored to us. So would you be willing, if you really believed it, would you be willing to pay the price and give up old ways of thinking and speaking and doing and learn his ways, his ways of original design just for you, just for you. You are precious to him today. You are born for such a time as this. You are not a mistake. Nothing about your life is a mistake. Not even the battles. So let's look a wee bit deeper. So I believe that God has opened to you today a gate of goodness. A gateway is opened a gateway of what of goodness psalm 23 verse 6 says surely that means surely there's no doubt about it we can be certain of something that follows us two stalkers goodness and mercy goodness and mercy are stalking you moment by moment day by day they're there they do not leave you if you know jesus and christ is in your life you have two stalkers that are there for your good, protecting you, loving you, pushing you forward, called goodness and mercy. Mercy covers up all your messes and goodness is there to push you forward and bless you with abundance. John 10, 10, I came that you may have life and have it in a mediocre way, in a way that might work, in a way that Mm, you're not really quite sure of. No, guys. John 10, 10 says, I came that you, 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 Andrew, you, Jillian, you, Hyde, you, Angie, you, Sarah, you, Claire, you, Tim, you, Trevor, you, you may have life and have it abundantly. Abundantly. Come on. What does it look like to have abundant life? Who's living an abundant life right now? Who's not living an abundant life right now? You need to step through the gateway of goodness. You need to start walking through those doorways of declaration 
and putting words in action to, to your dreams and your belief systems. So let's look at some facts here. Facts are sure things, right? There are three types of people. There are people who appear to succeed at everything. It's as though like this realm of favor and joy and pleasure and success are all around them and their influences and it influences every aspect of their lives. There is relationships, career, health, material possessions all appear to be totally just full and pulsate with abundance and goodness and fruitfulness. I'm sure some of us know people like that. Then there are people who live with constant patterns of failure. Totally the opposite. And they exist in this realm of continual disappointment, tragedy, broken dreams, shattered hopes. And then there's the third lot. There's the people who just live their lives somewhere in between the first and the second. Sometimes things work out well for them and other times they don't. Their lives seem to be a little bit of glossing, a little bit of, you know, a bit upside down, but not a lot in between. And a lot of people think this is a normal way to live. A lot of Christians believe this is a normal way to live. Fact two, you can create your own world. The life you live now is predominantly happening because of your choices, your actions, your reactions, your thought life, and your words. Let me say that again. The life you live now is predominantly happening because of your choices, your actions, your reactions, your thoughts, and your words. So many of us have let other people dictate how our lives are lived, dictate how we should be emotionally, dictate how we should speak and act, how we should think. But you have a God-given ability, a DNA, a creative ability within you that enables you to powerfully influence all that pertains to your life, positively or negatively. You have the power today to create your own world. Your own world you have already created to this point, but you have the ability today to step through a gateway of God's goodness, through the doorways of declaration and activation to totally change, create a new world around you, to set in motion a new future to set in motion a future filled with hope and abundance that God has spoken over you time and time again. So that was fact two, you can create your own world. Fact three, God desires for you to have a good life. Do you know that? Oh, but I don't know. You know, sometimes it's God lets me suffer to teach me a lesson. Rubbish. Fact three. God desires for you to have a good life. Jeremiah 29, 11, I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to keep you held in a cage. Plans to keep you disappointed. Plans to make you feel you don't belong and not loved. Really? Jeremiah 29, 11 declares, I declare it over you today. I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. The plans to prosper you, not to harm you. Plans to give you a hope and a future. God desires for you to have a good life. Fact four, Jesus is the gateway to a life filled with goodness and blessing. That's a fact. He is a gateway to a life filled with goodness and blessing. How do we know that? John 10, 10, a thief comes only to steal, to kill, to destroy. But I have come that who you may have life in its fullness. So we've got abundance. We've got no harm being done to us. We have fullness. Come on. Are you starting to believe it? Jesus is the gateway to a life filled with goodness and blessing. Fact five. Through Christ, you, you, you can create order out of chaos and light in the midst of darkness. 
we're surrounded by darkness, we're surrounded by light, we're surrounded by different realms, different atmospheres, but you have the ability to change, shift, and create new atmospheres, new influences, new ways of walking. In John 8, verse 12, the Lord says, I am the light of the world. He who follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Through Christ, you can create order out of chaos, light in the midst of darkness. I am the light of the world. He who follows me, there's the, there's the key, there's your action. He who follows me will not walk in darkness, but have the light of life. Fact six, you can create a glorious future. You, I'm speaking to you today. Are you hearing me? Are you getting it? Like I'm talking to you. This is your possibility. Yeah, this is for you. I don't care who you are or what situation you're in today. This is for you. You can create and change your world around you. Fact six, you can create a glorious future. Matthew 6, 10 says, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Our future is not um, restricted or bound by a fallen world. We belong to a different kingdom, a kingdom of abundance, a kingdom of incredible love, a kingdom of partnership, a kingdom where the two have become one, a kingdom where we communicate with the the most powerful force ever known that is unchanging. Oh my gosh. You know, Deuteronomy 8, when God was preparing his people to possess the land, this was what a land of promise. This was a land of promise, of honey and abundance and grapes that it took two people to carry one little, one big bunch. In verse 18, it says, you shall remember the Lord your God, for it is he who gives you power to get wealth. It is he who gives you power to get wealth. So remember, fact six, we're on. You can create a glorious future. He gives you power to create wealth, power to make, create, obtain wealth. This word power here is koa, and it refers to a man's strength, power, might, the strength of angels and the strength of God. So for you to gain wealth, to make, obtain, create, there has to be a marriage of these two realms, the realm of heaven, God's strength, and the realm of earth, your strength. These two realms have to marry God and you. To make refers to action taken to implement, create, and obtain. To obtain it, you have to create it. How do we create it? We create it through the marriage of God's realm and our realm coming together. You are the temple. You host that realm. That realm is in you. He says, I have given you power to make obtain and create wealth. I am par um, partnering with you in this today. So you must always remember the marriage. God's creative ability is always in his glory realm, always, which is the realm of presence. It's so imperative that we just don't think these things, but we spend time in that glory realm in the realm of presence, the realm of his majesty, the realm of his sovereignty. And we learn how to partner with him in that realm where we're seated, where glory reigns, we're seated with him. Isaiah 60 verse one says, arise, shine. So action, arise, and then shine your bit. Your bit, arise and shine, that's your bit of the marriage, the realm of earth, the realm of the flesh. And then it says what? For your light, the realm of heaven, God's part, has come. There's this marriage, arise and shine, the light comes, arise and shine, the glory comes, arise and shine, 
the power comes, arise and shine. The fire comes, arise and shine. The creativity comes. <sighs> the glory of God, the source of creativity has risen, settled upon you. It's a marriage. So the power of knowing who you are, I'm just going to uh, finish off with this. The power of knowing who you are. There's, there's more of this to follow. I'm probably going to do when I speak, I'm going to take this a little bit deeper. So Acts 17, 28 says, for in him, we live and move and have our being. We exist for we are also his children. So without him, that means we don't live. We can't move. And we actually really don't have any existence. And I think so many Christians live in that bracket of, yeah, some, some days are okay and other days are not so okay. And we just live in this mm, come see, come sa world instead of living in the completion of union and marriage in the glory with God, knowing who we are, operating in that creativity and that connection to be able to move forward, creating all that we were ordained to be. Colossians 2.10 says, so you also are complete. You are complete through the union with Christ, who is the head over every ruler, every authority. That's Colossians 2 verse 10. You are complete. There's nothing missing, nothing lacking. You are complete because of your union with him. This marriage of the two realms, of heaven's realm and the earth realm, the flesh realm, have brought a completeness like it was back in the garden with Adam and Eve. You're complete, nothing lacking, nothing broken. So the fact one of knowing who you are, when you know who and whose you are, you can be who you are. When you know who and whose you are, you can be who you are. Fact two, God created you in his image and likeness as a creator and a ruler. God created you in his image and likeness as a creator and as a ruler. In Genesis 1, 26, 27, he said, let, God said, let us make man in our image according to our likeness and let them rule over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the sky and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female created he them. You have authority to rule. You have authority to create. You have authority to make a difference. You have authority to shift atmospheres. Fact three, God gave the earth to man to rule and steward. God gave the earth to man to rule and to steward. Psalm 115 verse 16 says, The heavens are the heavens of the Lord, but the earth he has given to the sons of men. The heavens are the heavens of the, earth, of, of the Lord, but the earth he has given to the sons of men. God gave the earth to man to rule and steward. Fact four, Jesus Christ died on the cross to restore us to our original relationship with God and our ability to create and rule with him. He died on the cross to restore, he to restore us to what? Original design. To give us what? The ability to create and to rule with him. Romans chapter five, verse 10 says, for if while we were enemies, we were reconciled to God through the death of his son, how much more having been reconciled will we be saved by his life? And Colossians 1.22, yet he has now reconciled you in his fleshy body through death in order to present you before him, holy, blameless, and beyond reproach. God gave his 
flesh body as a sacrifice so that your flesh body doesn't have to be sacrificed. He made that exchange on your, your behalf. Fact five, we have been given keys of the kingdom to utilize on the earth. Matthew 16, 19. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven and whatever you bind on earth shall have been bound in heaven and whatever you loose on earth shall have been loosed in heaven. You hold keys of his authority and have power through Christ in you to bind, bind on the earth with heaven backing you up. You can loose on the earth with heaven's confirmation. Let me say it again. You hold keys of his authority and you have the power through Christ in you to bind on the earth with heaven backing you up. You can loose in the earth with heaven's confirmation. Therefore, everything Jesus did on the earth is now celebrated in heaven. He bound death and he bound hell and he bound sin. And all of that, what did he lose? He lost life. He lost abundance. He lost fullness. So you too, you guys this morning, through the power of Christ in you, can bind any demonic force or interference in your life. And you can loose the righteousness will, the righteous will of God into your midst. You, through the power of Christ, can bind any demonic force or interference in your life and loose the righteousness and the will of God into your midst. You can take dominion over the internal enemy, your flesh, and win battles of your mind and loose the nature of God into your life. And the Lord will back you up. It's his promise to those who are in Christ Jesus. There's nothing that you do not have the power to overcome, to dominate, and to bind, to cast down, and then to loose a divine exchange of calling in the realm of heaven's abundance and favor and goodness into that arena, whether it's your thought life. If it's your thought life, what are the things you need to change? What are the things you need to stop watching? Who are the people you need to stop hanging around with? So often, you know, we wait for God to bring order and change, don't we? We, we wait for him to bring things or do things or um, give us wealth or all those different things. When actually he's just waiting for us to partner with him so that it can happen. He waits for us to take control and authority over a situation and to bring about the change in partnership. He's waiting for you and for me to execute his purposes here on the earth. That's quite a powerful thing. If we really take time to I, just take time and meditate on these scriptures. Take time to meditate. Fact six, the Holy Spirit is our guide and teacher. John 16. But I tell you the truth, it is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the helper will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. I have many more things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. But when he, the spirit of truth, comes, he will guide you into all truth. For he will not speak on his own initiative, but whatever he hears, he will speak and he will disclose to you what is to come. So there were many things that Christ hadn't said before he left, but now he has left. What do we have? We have his Holy Spirit. And what is the Holy Spirit here to do? Take us into all truth, to lead us into those things that Christ didn't say on earth. It said he's going to speak to us through truth, and he'll not speak in his own initiative. But what, what he hears, we hear. We have this divine connection between heaven's realm and our heart, between heaven's realm and our spirit, to, to hear the things of God, to hear his will, to hear what he wants us to do, how he wants us to speak, how he wants us to act. Fact seven, you house the presence of God on earth. 
And I know like there's people, I remember like, you know, way back, I'd say, oh, don't be ridiculous. How can I house the presence of God? I'm just me. I'm just me. I had no idea who I was or the power that, that dwelt in me. I had no idea. And most of the time I was so caught up in my hurts and brokenness and anger that I couldn't see past that. But, you know, I housed the presence of God. And as I began to believe scripture, as I began to believe the prophetic word of God spoken over my life, as I began to um, uh, break agreement with those lies, break agreement with those broken areas, and get that divine exchange of God's healing and God's identity over me and God's power and voice over me, I have been transformed into a whole different person, or I wouldn't be here today talking to you on screen. Honestly, I would have hidden away in a corner. So anyway, we're coming into land. Fact seven, you house the presence of God. One Corinthians, do you not know that you're a temple of God and that the spirit of God dwells in you? The spirit of God dwells in you. Genesis 28, 16. Then Jacob awoke from his sleep. I love this. I love this. Jacob awoke from his sleep and said, surely, without a doubt, no question asked, the Lord is in this place. And I did not know it. He was afraid. And he said, how awesome is this special place? This is none other than the house of God. And this is the gate to heaven. That is what you need to speak over your life, because where Jacob met God um, and he had this experience with the ladder and he said, this is the house of God. This is the place where he dwells. And this is a gateway to heaven. Well, now we have what? We have Christ living in us. We are the house of God. It's not a place on a hill. We are that house. We are that dwelling place. We are that ladder to heaven. We are that gateway. We have that gateway because Christ lives in us. We have that continual ladder, that continual ascending and descending. That's who we are. Isn't that exciting? What Jacob had in an encounter, we live in in reality. We live in this reality. Fact eight, you're a priest for the Lord on the earth. You're a priest. Why are you a priest? Because you live in the house of God, because the house of God dwells in you. You're a priest forever in the house of God, because the house of God dwells in you through Christ. Come on. You're a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for God's own possession. So what? So that you may proclaim the excellencies of him who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. That's who you are. Oh, my gosh, I get excited. Like I, I am the house of God. Ooh, I'm the house of God, guys. Come on. You're the house of God. Put your hand on yourself. I am the house of God. Oh, God, you live in me. Your power is in me. Your creative ability is in me. All that you are lives in me in its fullness. Oh, Jesus. Within me is the gateway to heaven. I can bring other people into that place. I can access heaven, God. I can access those realms that are closed to so many. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Abba. Ooh, I can do all things. He strengthens me. You can create favor instead of rejection, health and strength in your body, heaven and earth in your marriage, blessings instead of cursings. But always, 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 we have to acknowledge the source of that ability to create the glory presence of God. It's a marriage of two realms. So many entrepreneurs are being birthed right now. Why? Because I believe that, that the creative flow of God is pouring out on the earth. There's a creative flow like I think never before. And people that never thought they could achieve anything are beginning to, to birth businesses that are succeeding. Thousands of new businesses. 
What's in your heart to create? What's in your heart? I want to do a, a declaration with you and a little bit of activation. So let's do it together. I can change my world. Go back one. I have received the keys of the kingdom. Whatever I bind on earth is bound in heaven. Whatever I loose on earth is loosed in heaven. I shift atmospheres of oppression, releasing the love of God that overcomes darkness. Come on. I can create order out of chaos. I am chosen. The gateway of God's goodness dwells within me in the spirit of Christ. Therefore, I have access to heavenly realms at all times. I am completely and fully accepted in him. The Lord loves me with an everlasting love and has promised to give me a future and a hope. God's love toward me is patient and kind. Nothing can separate me from his love, not tribulation or distress, persecution, famine, nakedness, not peril, sword, angels, principalities or death, things present or things to come. Nothing, nothing, nothing can separate me from the love of God in Christ. Nothing can separate me from the love of God in Christ. If any of you would like a copy of that declaration, just to read out over your lives or to declare over your lives each day, just let me know. Just uh, send us a little message here on Facebook um, or on our website, freedomfireministries.com. Send us a little comment box there and we'll see where we go from there. So... I'm just going to come off. So thank you for joining us today. <laughs>